Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. Today the question I'm answering is, what's in the box in regards to this game, Chronicles of Avel from Rebel Studios? Now this is a game that is published, it's, it's out there, it's on the market, you can get it, but not many people have heard about it because it comes from a Polish design company and was originally released in Poland. It is, of course, coming to North America, as you can tell from this copy here. Now, I do have to thank Rebel Studios for sending me a review copy of this game, as well as its expansions. Now, this is a one to four player cooperative game that's aimed at family, specifically towards kids. This is something you can play with your kids and is a fantasy RPG-like experience in board game form where you're trying to defend your city from the incoming monsters. Games are meant to play in under an hour, and it says it's 8+. plus. I think with help, you could probably go a little younger. Now, all I've done at this point is cut the shrink wrap off this, so you're going to get to see what I see inside this box for the first time at the same time as me. So let's get to it. So here you have the box for Chronicles of Avell, and the first thing I want to cover is look at that awesome artwork. I love the aesthetic of this game. I love how cool the creatures and characters look in this game. Then we get to the rules of the game, which are all about how to defeat the beast. We're going to flip through this quickly. Oh, a great looking component overview here, showing everything you get in the game. You've got how to build the map at the start of the game. You've got some bag building elements here that is actually one of the coolest features in this game. Uh, in my opinion, you've got a big boss to fight as well as his health tracker various wandering monsters, and there is obviously some exploration, so you don't know what there is just outside the castle gates. Getting into how to build your character. Now this is really neat. To build your character, you're going to draw your character on the outline, then you're going to play it on your player board, then you're going to put a second layer over top, creating a two-layered board, featuring your own artwork, which I think is really neat. It goes into the equipment, how equipment works, how wandering monsters work, and so on. I see lots of great examples here. Um, showing small monster tokens compared to big monster tokens, the various dice you get in the game and how they work, the potions you can find, what all the iconography means, and then again, lots of examples. I always love to see that. Rewards for fighting monsters. Different actions you can do on the tile, so there's a worker placement element to this game as well. Um, and then the end of the round, the Black Moon Rises, which I can't help but think of a certain um, Nintendo game when that came up. You've got rules for building castle walls and so on. And rules for solo play, as well as a message from the designer. Gotta appreciate any game nowadays that includes solo plays. So then we have Dawn of the Black Moon. I think are these are either scenarios or they are uh, fiction, some kind of story. But it looks like these might be different adventures. No, this looks like background. So you got some background here. So Guide to the Beasts of Evel. So that's cool. They obviously have created quite a world here. It describes what all the different monster types are. Very cool. Then a fantastic looking player aid. It's a nice thick card, which I appreciate. Showing what all the different symbols mean. As well as, there you go, different board setups. So that's also a cool bonus. I have no idea what we're looking at here. This looks interesting. Constellation map of names. So this might just be a way to name your characters. It's neat. It's two-sided and different. So that's interesting. It looks like you can roll dice to name your character. Oh, this is a, a piece for the box insert. So you build a box insert here. So it's how to do some of the assemblies. So this chest piece is going to be a box insert. Bonus baggies, always appreciated. Um, silica packs in with the wooden components. Silica packs, for those that you don't know, are there to protect from humidity. So if you actually live in a highly humid area, you may want to keep these with the game. We have wooden walls, which can be built around the city to help defend it in the last phase of the game. There are the hero meeples, which look like brave adventurers. So you have the hero meeples. 
Now with my copy, I was also sent a set of these hero stickers to go on the meeples. I do not know if those come in the retail version of the game. We have hearts, which are used for tracking your toughness. Note in this game, characters cannot die. They just become stunned if they are out of endurance, which is tracked with these hearts. What I really want to show off is the nice chunkiness of these pieces. Next, we have a beautiful felt bag. This is really nice. The, the quality here is top notch. I do have a slight concern. You may have a problem with things sticking in the corner based on other bag building games I have played. Really neat looking art here. What this is for is whenever you find items in this game, like you defeat a monster, you have to reach in here and try to pull out an icon, and, uh, or sorry, an item. And the items have different shapes, which I'm sure we'll see when we get to them. So you get to feel around to try to pull out the right type of item, but you never know exactly what you're getting. We'll go over here to here are your character sheets with what's a male presenting or female presenting, and they just switch back and forth. So it's male and female, so it looks like 50-50, male and female presenting. Now, it does say you get to draw your character, but there is a lot of detail already here. I'm a little disappointed by this. I wish this was lighter, so it was easier to draw on top of. It does talk about how the first step is to draw your character, but that looks a lot of pre-drawn to me. I would have preferred if that was a lighter outline or perhaps naked, like just an armature you could build on. Huge pack. That's always a bonus. Then we got some awesome looking custom. I really dig the color of these. So we have the different attack dice for the characters. Uh, you know what? Let's put these over here. So, I can them up. so you have the different attack dice for the characters. The basic attack dice are the green. And what they have on them is only th the, the three hits, two shields, and a blank. So they're not the best. These can get, when you're up things get upgraded you can upgrade to other dice that have more hit symbols more symbols on them and other dice that can actually have magic symbols which can be used as anything when rolled so here is a full set of the hero dice love the the colors on these and then the heroes also have defense dice which are these ones so what i think you actually have is one of these these is upgraded defense and these are upgraded attack or perhaps the other way around then we have the bad guy dice and again, you have two different levels of dice. This is a the the um, monster defense, and this is the monster hits. So they're used for both attack and defense. What you do in a combat is you roll them all at once and then cancel each other out and then see how many hits are left. Really dig these dice. I will note they are not etched. So this, although that looks like it's under a layer of gloss, I doubt that's going to come off, but they are not etched dice. They are plastic, not wood. Next, we get to the two layer player boards I mentioned earlier. So what you would do here is you would put your character sheet on here and then you would overlay one of these, which turns it into a two layered board. One other brilliant part about this game is the way your backpack works is this is two layered, but you can fit in as much as you can fit in without anything overlapping. So you literally have to kind of twist and turn your pieces of equipment to get them fit in the backpack. What you're seeing here is stuff that would come through through the character sheet and this is where you track your health. There are of course four of these and four overlays to go with them which I'm going to nest them now, just because that's going to make it put away a little nicer. Then we have... Okay, so these are little plastic um, like screw pieces because the monster, the main bad guy's health is tracked using some dials, so that's for assembling that. Then we get into punch boards. Look at the artwork on these. I am really impressed by the aesthetic of this. These are wandering monsters, and if you note, they aren't just your standard D&D creatures redone, though you do have your typical orky looking character. Uh, these are two-sided, but the other sides, this is showing because it's a starting tile. This is the castle you're trying to defend. And then there are some tiles you need to keep every game that are near the front of the castle. Um, oh, so they punch really well as one goblin looking creature pops out here on me. We have more tiles, again, unique looking monsters that I really like the art style on. We do have a, a very goblin looking goblin. Again, two sided. We're gonna quickly do these ones because there's not a lot to show here. More. So what you see here is different types of wandering monsters in each area. So this would have two small wandering monsters. This would have one small wandering monster. This would have a large wandering monster. This is a spot where if you defeat the monster, it now becomes a worker placement spot where you can come here and get wood. 
Then we have coin tokens, health tokens, that's for tracking damage on the monsters. Um, this is an end game scoring called the Dark Moon. Once you get so many phases into the game, you're going to flip this over and it's going to tell you how many additional monsters to spawn. This is your time tracker in the game, so you're going to play through this many rounds. Once you get this far, the monsters start attacking the city. Up till then, you're kind of preparing for that. Then we have the items. So these are the things that would go into the bag where you're going to feel around and pull out. And what you've got is potions that have one shape. You've got shields that have another shape. Helmets that have a different shape. And weapons have a different shape. So pretty easily, uh, especially for adults, you should be able to reach in the bag to pull out the right type. But you never know what you're getting. Now all of these start on their brown side, but can be upgraded during the game to be better. Then finally, we have, these are seal tokens where you can seal some spots. You have traps you can put out on the board, some trackers, first player marker, and this is the standee for the big boss you'll be fighting. And that's it. That's what you get inside the box for Chronicles of Avel. There you have it, Chronicles of Avel from Rebel Studio. So that's everything you get in this surprisingly heavy box for Chronicles of Avel from Rebel Studio, a cooperative family weight game for one to four players that I gotta say looks fantastic. There's some really excellent components in here, including dual layer player boards, a really unique inventory system, a way of getting prizes that involves pulling from a bag and trying to use your sense of touch to grab the right thing. Lots of great looking stuff on here, custom dice. I am really looking forward to playing this one with my kids and sitting down to the table, actually playing as a whole family. So that is Chronicles of Avel from Rebel Studios. Thank you for joining me for that unboxing. Again, I am Motuzno, the Tabletop Bellhop. You can find me all over the internet. It's Tabletop Bellhop, one word. You can hit up our website, tabletopbellhop.com, for other great gaming content. You can also check us out on YouTube and find the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast on your podcatcher of choice. Thank you for joining me. Good night and game on.